The Crisis of European Sciences and Transcendental Phenomenology, An Introduction to Phenomenological Philosophy German, Die Krisis der Europäischen Wissenschaften und die Transcendental Phenomenology, Eine Einleitung in die Phenomenologische Philosophie is an unfinished 1936 book by the German philosopher Edmund Husserl. The work was influential and is considered the culmination of Husserl's thought, though it has been seen as a departure from Husserl's earlier work. It has been compared to the philosopher Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel's The Phenomenology of Spirit 1807. Topic. Summary The work is divided into three main sections. Part 1, The Crisis of the Sciences as Expression of the Radical Life Crisis of European Humanity. Part 2, Clarification of the Origin of the Modern Opposition between Physicalistic Objectivism and Transcendental Subjectivism. And Part 3, The Clarification of the Transcendental Problem and the Related Function of Psychology. In Part 1, Husserl discusses what he considers a crisis of science, while in Part 2 he discusses the astronomer Galileo Galilei and introduces the concept of the life world. Topic. Publication history The Crisis of European Sciences and Transcendental Phenomenology was published by Martinus Nijhoff Publishers in 1954. A second printing followed in 1962. An English translation by David Carr was published by Northwestern University Press in 1970. Topic. Reception Topic. Academic journals The Crisis of European Sciences and Transcendental Phenomenology was discussed by Harold Garfinkel and Kenneth Liberman in Human Studies, Mark Robson in Paragraph, Matthew Morgan in the Philosophical Forum, Antti Pazanin in Politica Misau, Croatian Political Science Review, Carlos Belvedere in Civitas, Revista de Ciencias Sociae, and the anthropologist Bruce Kapferer in Social Analysis. In research in phenomenology, the book received discussions from R. Philip Buckley and Andrea Stady. Pazanin wrote that the book was the most influential work not only of its author, but also of the entire philosophy of the time. Buckley wrote that the book was Husserl's most influential work, and that its themes represented the fulfillment of Husserl's philosophical activity and continued to be relevant to contemporary philosophy. He credited Husserl with providing a powerful critique of the development of modern science. He observed that Husserl's discussion of Galileo was famous, and suggested that it was the result of a long-standing interest. However, he suggested that the book's history makes it clear that Husserl found it a struggle to give clearer expression to his ideas and to unify them into a coherent whole. While working on it, he noted that Husserl was dissatisfied with part three of the work and wanted to revise it. He also argued that the work left some problems unresolved, including the question of how the decay of philosophy and science has made the existence of that decay apparent. Topic. Evaluations in books The philosopher Richard Velkley wrote in Leo Strauss and Joseph Cropsey's anthology History of Political Philosophy that the crisis of European sciences and transcendental phenomenology was Husserl's last great work. He considered Husserl's reflections on the life world to be among the most striking and fundamental of the new concerns that Husserl developed in response to his awareness of a contemporary moral and political crisis. 
However, he considered details of Husserl's account of science open to question. The philosopher Maurice Nattinson compared the book to Hegel's The Phenomenology of Spirit in Edmund Husserl, Philosopher of Infinite Tasks 1973. He argued that, despite the differences of outlook between Husserl and the novelist Fyodor Dostoevsky, Husserl's views could be compared to Dostoevsky's. Carr wrote in his introduction to the English translation of the work that it was important and had influenced other philosophers. The philosopher Roger Scruton was influenced by Husserl's concept of the life world in Sexual Desire, 1986, using it to explore the nature of human sexuality. He maintained that Husserl correctly recognized that the life world is given intersubjectively, but that the transcendental psychology Husserl adopted in association with the idea of its intersubjectivity as flawed. Dan R. Stiver wrote in Great Thinkers of the Western World 1992 that the work was very influential. However, he maintained that because it is unfinished, its interpretation is notoriously difficult. He maintained that in it, Husserl adopted views that placed his belief in the possibility of basing philosophy on the direct givenness to intuition of what is experienced under severe strain. He argued that while one of Husserl's comments has been seen as expressing his awareness of the failure of phenomenology, it was more likely that Husserl wanted to recognize that what had been a burgeoning program attracting many disciples had fallen to the wayside with its founder, having been overtaken by other philosophical movements. Don Welton described the book as the culmination of Husserl's thought in his Introduction to the Essential Husserl 1999. Michael Inwood described the book as a great but unfinished work in the Oxford Companion to Philosophy 2005. He compared it to Hegel's The Phenomenology of Spirit and argued that in it Husserl adopted a philosophical approach that differed from that he had adopted in earlier works such as Ideas 1913 and Cartesian Meditations 1931. In his view, the work brought into question Husserl's attempt to found a rigorous science that was free from all preconceptions. He noted that some philosophers, including Maurice Merleau-Ponty, considered it a significant departure from Husserl's earlier work. Peter Galbix wrote in The Theory of New Classical Macroeconomics, a positive critique 2015, that some researches utilized the work to show how other disciplines, such as mainstream economics, shared the crisis of modern sciences. <laughs>